Hi there, this is Jamila Adams, host of the Jamila Adams Experience, where it's a place and a space for women over 40 to be inspired, encouraged, and heard. You're welcome to join the experience every Friday. It's vacation time. Are you ready to get away? Far away? VacateWithNate.com has direct access to the travel industry's top brands. Every major travel supplier, including resorts, hotels, tour providers, cruise lines, vacation companies, airlines, and car rental brands in every destination in the world. Log on today and get your travel plans in motion at VacateWithNate.com. And for the individuals who want to turn a passion for travel into a flexible source of income and rewards, reach out to Nate at ShopNobleTravel at AOL.com for more information. Hey everybody, it's your girl Giggles. Make sure and go check out Listen Up, Listen In podcast with Preezy. Real talk for real people. Tanya, you ready? Listen up, listen in. 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 Thanks for tuning in, let's have a conversation Talking worldwide, it don't matter your location What you going through in the topic may have relation Let's get some motivation, let's swap out education Every Friday we heal, laugh, improve, and grow Put some nutrients in your mind, give you food for the soul I know you pumped and prepared for your weekend and low Might as well join the discussion and tune into the show Listen up, listen in 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 Hey everybody, welcome to Listen Up, Listen In Podcast. I'm your host, Preezy. Before I even get started, all praises to Jehovah God and Jesus Christ every day. Amen. And you know, I got a special guest today. I always have special guests. But let me tell you a little bit about this young lady before she comes on and tell you her story. She took a natural talent in writing all the way to Howard University. After getting a bachelor's in English, she began Against the Stream magazine. As the editor-in-chief, she grew the publication from a one-woman blog to a team of five writers with over 25,000 monthly visitors. She has worked with numerous Christian authors, applying faith to her credentials. Her catalog of work is diverse, but her approach is simple. She's helped authors with a vision get to the next stage of their writing career. So without further ado, let me introduce you to my special guest, Markeela Hinton. Hey, Markeela, how you doing? Hey, Preezy. I am doing really, really well. I'm so excited for our call. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm very happy that you're here. But before we even get started, I always like to ask my guests, how is your day going? My day is going really, really well. It's been a lazy morning, which doesn't typically get to happen. I have two kids. So it's been a fantastic morning. (laughs) (laughs) Easy, (laughs) easy. That's good. That's good. That's good. Now, I read your bio, but only you can tell your story. So please let my audience know who Markeela Hinton is. Oh, my goodness. So I am a ghostwriter, an editor, and a confidence coach. Um, And I leverage the process of writing a book to help my clients increase their faith, build their confidence, and create income. And this journey of all of those things kind of coming together has taken about five years to really get the clarity on how God was situating all of my talents and all of my gifts and skills and knacks. Um, But at the top of this year, I went to God and asked him, "Okay, God, what am I supposed to be doing? And the amount of clarity that he gave me in this year has just skyrocketed me to do so much for um, my sisters who are aspiring authors, but also genuinely what I really believe is just the the kingdom of heaven in general. I feel like God has given me so much clarity on who I am this year that it's been able to part the Red Seas, if you will, and just give me a clear direction of who I should be serving and how I should be helping the people that God has called me to. 
And so it's been a fantastic journey, but that's who I am. I'm a ghostwriter. I've been a ghostwriter for about three years now. Um, I've been an editor for over 10 years. I edited my first book um, early, early on in college. <laughs> um, it was one of my aunt's books. And God has just always blessed me to be connected to people who needed my gifts. And so it took me a little while to realize that I had an actual business. Um, but what caused me to take myself serious was that I had a friend who had a publishing company and I knew she had a publishing company and I just didn't tell her that I could help her. So we had a mutual friend who was like, you know, she has a whole degree in English and she's not helping you. And so she's like, are you kidding me? So I sent her a writing sample and um, my work with her really forced me to see what I do for, for God and what I do with my talents. And it caused me to become a lot more serious about my journey as a ghostwriter and an editor. Um, but I had started confidence coaching in 2018. And so when I came to God at the top of this year, God told me that I was already a confidence coach for my writing clients. And now here we are. I get to have conversations <laughs> with amazing people like you, Preezy, to just talk about what I'm doing now and what God has me working on now. Wow, that sounds excellent. That is excellent. Wow. So, Power University. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Ain't you? I am. I feel like all people that graduate Howard, we all have the same obsession with Howard. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, I learned so much about just business. I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about, you know, growth and, and how to be, show up in the world with confidence. Solely from from being at the at the Mecca, as we call it, <laughs> as students. <laughs> wow. Wow. So. What really encouraged you? Like when you're writing, I know it takes a lot in writing. Was yeah. there anybody that really influenced you to write? Like, do you have any authors oh, yeah. that you really, really look up to? Yeah. So I come from a long line of of preachers. My dad's a pastor. My mom's a chaplain. My grandfather's a pastor. And my grandfather was one of the the first pastors to televise his, his sermons in Chicago. Wow. And he, he grew this massive audience in a time where like, you know, people just weren't doing that yet. <laughs> but he wrote a lot of books. Um, one of the books that I remember the most that I actually got a chance to read a little bit of was called I Command You to Live. And he wrote that book when I was probably like six or seven, um, very young. But so I've always known that like writing was an option just because I knew a lot of authors. My um, my great uncle was also an author. So I knew people who were writing books as a little girl. Um, and I my dad is just a creative. So like he plays a bunch of instruments. He he writes music. He's a singer. Like <laughs> he's just a creative. Right. Um, and so my dad saw that I had this gift. My mom saw that. I, my mom is a court stenographer. So like, you know, on those court TV shows, the people that are talking away, that's what my mom does. So wow. she's naturally gifted in English. Natu like my mother can edit things, you know, she can edit a 500 word paragraph in like three wow. minutes. She has a crazy ability to read really fast because that's what she has to do for her job. Wow. <laughs> so... God kind of situated my life so that I would just have this appetite for writing. But it wasn't until I was in school at Howard, I took a class. So I, I've always loved mystery and like sci-fi. Um, I've always been into like weird stories. Um, like as a kid, Scooby-Doo was my joint. What? You know? What? Girl, bye. Man, Scooby-Doo. Let me tell you something. I don't mean to cut you off. I'm so happy you said that because I did a live stream about cartoons like kids don't know about our cartoons that we grew up with. And honey, right. Scooby-Doo has enlightened me about like, you can't get nothing past me no. after watching Scooby-Doo. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Scooby-Doo really? taught you on, he taught you on the low what to look for. 
and certain yeah. things. So yes, girl. <laughs> yes, so, so, like, literally, that's my favorite. So when I got to Howard, I took a I took a course called Pope Fiction at Georgetown. Because mm-hmm. Howard, not just Howard, most colleges have where you can take classes at a at a collection of schools that are in what's called a consortium. So I took a class at Georgetown called Pope Fiction, and that class taught me the history of sci-fi and how like what we know as modern sci-fi today actually started with, you know, fantastical stories of Westerners and, right. and these kinds of like cowboys that could do these superhero, superhuman things. So that taught me like the foundational things that I needed to learn about how to be creative in writing and also how to take the limits off of my my ideas of what I could write. But then I took a class on Octavia Butler and Tanana Reed Do. And both of those women are sci-fi writers, but they write about black sci-fi. Right. And I didn't know. Like, you know, I thought that I was like weird because I liked sci-fi. I didn't know that there was this whole movement of black people writing these these types of stories. And when I learned about Octavia Butler, some of the things that she went through in her childhood and just her her discipline in her craft, it made me say, "Okay, I, like I'm I'm going to write for real. Nice. Um, so like my natural environment, family, grandpa writing books, dad being a creative, mom being a court stenographer. Then, you know, Howard, it really was like, Marquila, well, how do you want to live this out in your day to day life? And at Howard, people thought that Chicago was just this place where like, you know, it's like the wild, wild west, like gunshots right. were flying everywhere. And I grew up um, in the suburbs in high school outside of Chicago, but as a child, a young girl, I grew up in Hyde Park, and it's where I live now in Chicago. And I just knew that Chicago was so much more beautiful than what people thought. So what I decided in college was that I was going to create a platform that would show people the beauty of Chicago, the local businesses, the local people, the everyday heroes, because if more people knew about those businesses and those people, then they wouldn't be so quick to judge the city. And that's how I came up with ATS. And um, ATS Magazine really showed me a lot about business. It taught me a lot about resilience. It taught me how to make a business plan. You know, <laughs> ATS taught me how to pitch myself. Um, and so all of those skills, like those are the things that now today as, as a ghostwriter and a, an author coach, confidence coach, those are the things that I still put in practice every day. You know, teaching people how to get the moxie to believe in themselves and how to pitch and how to present well, how to stand in front of a room and not lose yourself. I learned a lot of that in the process of building my magazine. Um, and I shut my magazine down, not because we didn't have a growing community. I shut it down because it just wasn't cohesive with the the ethos of my life. I was a youth pastor at the time. And on Saturdays, I was doing like album release parties where it was like, support the board, get some Hennessy. <laughs> and then on Sunday, I was telling folks, you know, to come to the altar to get saved. And so I just found that tension to be too difficult. And even though the people that I was around in my magazine knew me to be a minister, they knew my heart for God and they would come to me for prayer and spiritual guidance. I still felt that I was just towing the line too much. Right. So I said, OK, God, I'm going to let you have this thing um, and I'm going to focus on whoever you're calling me to be. I got married. I got pregnant really fast. I got married really fast. I got pregnant really fast. (laughs) And crazy. uh, Nothing will change you like pregnancy. Like pregnancy made me question so much about my identity. And I've always been a confident person. I've always been like a sexy girl, like a party girl. That's been me my whole life. And you can't, (laughs) you can't be sexy. Or a party girl when you're pregnant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, I know Rihanna is like making everybody think that that's what it looks like, but it right. just really doesn't. Like, right. to be honest, your everyday life, you don't want to be bothered like that. Yes, yes. 
I grew really insecure, which I'd never experienced insecurity like that. I'd never looked in the mirror and didn't like who I saw. And um, as a good old church girl, because like I said, my whole family is in ministry. I reverted to what I know will always fix me. And that is that is God. So I came up with a devotion, seven devotions to help me build my confidence. And I knew it was for me to share. So I released the book, didn't have the confidence to sell the book, though. No. <laughs> so it, took me, it took me another year to get the confidence to sell the book because I had so many things going on in my life that were telling me that I didn't have the right to share that message. And that's a whole girl. Look, that's a whole other podcast. Yes, yes. But <laughs> at the environment that I was in and my own environment in my head made it difficult for me to stand into the into the anointing or or the calling or the gifting or the, the presence of my book. So another year passed and I was pregnant again and I said, OK, Marquisa, we have to we have to live this out. So I did a workshop based on my workbook and I always describe it in food or like teddy bear language <laughs> because I don't, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. It was literally the most juicy, fuzzy experience I've ever had in my life. Wow. Like it was it was so restorative. Um, we did a mirror meditation, which is just the practice of looking at yourself and speaking over your life. Right. And women were crying and we were laughing. We ate good food because I had there was like a, a lunch that came with it. And it was just like, honestly, something that I have been trying to replicate ever since. <laughs> ever since. <laughs> um, and so I kind of came up with a bunch of business ideas around this business. Um, and just didn't see the transformation that I knew I was supposed to be seeing in my clients when I was doing confidence coaching in that season of my life. And so I took a back seat from all of that work and was just doing my side hustles, editing people's books, dreaming up new dreams, you know, concerning this business. And I, at the top of this year, it was like the book and, and the confidence coaching, it almost like dragged me. <laughs> dragged me back into it because I I felt that it, it was necessary for me to pick it back up. Right. And so when I when God told me that I was already doing confidence coaching with my writing clients, I went back to my notes because I would always have these like brainstorming sessions um, around my confidence work, but I just wouldn't implement it. So in 2019, I, I wrote some notes and I changed my four step method into a five step method and added an extra P. But it didn't make sense. It was like, mm, that don't make sense. <laughs> but I knew it was what I needed to do. You know, it's like, yeah, this, this is what needs to happen. But I don't know if that works. Right. So at the top of this year, I'm I'm doing my brainstorming and I go back to my notes crazy. And it was like, I know what the extra P is for now. The extra P is for publish. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at all of my notes, it was like, I'm going to help women build their self-confidence because they're going to create a product that will prove to them that they can do hard things. Right. And um, I tell my clients that I give them the gift of completion because even though on my confidence coaching in the past, I was talking about all the stuff, the surge, the nourish, firm, all this good stuff that you do in my program. I didn't tell people to write a book. And the reality is the book is what was it was the thing, because when I was insecure, I had a physical product to look at and to say, no, Marquila, you you are strong. You are capable. You can do hard things. Um and so now all my clients, they get this gift of completion that I kind of left out in the past. And it has been a wonderful journey. I got my first client in March. Um, and so we're we're almost done with her book. Her book is almost ready to be published. And just seeing her go through the journey that God gave me and seeing seeing women work through this process of building their confidence by telling their story, it it really has brought together like 
you know, the dreams of the little eight year old girl who was watching Scooby Doo and like all of the other versions of me who wanted to be serving women and serving people in their process um, and helping people and, and sharing people's stories. I kind of get to do all of the stuff that I've done in every other stage of my life in this really beautiful, <laughs> beautiful package pro program. <laughs> Wow, that's awesome. That is really awesome. <laughs> now, my thing is, when it comes to writing, because you say you help uh, individuals, you help women to get their yeah. book started. Um, how are you helping them? Um, because we know, like you said, you were scared. You, you know, you had a lot of things going on and you, you had a book, but you didn't publish it. So yeah. what do you do? in your program that is in, not only encouraging the women to get started with their book, but what else, how else are you influencing them to get this book out? So we go through five steps. And the first step is just to figure out what they should even write the book about, right? Like, like, and there's also a deep, like, um, emotional and, like mental aspect of what I do because I realize that for some of us the reason why we're insecure is because we just have not come to peace with who we are right. our identity is lacking and I tell people my conf my definition of the word confidence is that you can maintain your identity no matter where you are and I mean that both physically and you know figuratively you know you can maintain who you are no matter who's around you no matter what circumstances are around you that you can still be who you are right. so a lot of the work that we do before we can even really get my clients to writing anything is to figure out who are you and and what is it that you need to tell people so we get that figured out my clients go through these these processes these activities there are there's you know, a five step process and we do it over six months because we really figure out who they serve. Who is your reader? Who are the people that you are called and ordained to talk to, to touch, to help? And as we figure out, you know, who they are, who they are touching and who they're supposed to be connected to, then I start to teach them very practical marketing tools. Um, I train them on how to market a book specifically because the way that you market social media content or the way that you build a social media audience is not the same way that you actually get people to read a book. Um, people will follow you and then never read your book. People will like your picture and never read your captions, right? So I have to teach my clients the specific things that they should do in order to get people to read their book. Um, and I also train them on just the basic metrics of business, because whenever you write a book, what you're really doing is creating a book business. Because you can't just write the book and then put it on Amazon or expect for a, a company like Ingram Spark to distri distribute it for you. You have to put the, yourself out into the world. You have to put your book on your feet and walk around with it <laughs> and say, hey, I got a book. I have a book. Did you know I have a book? And a lot of us, the real, like I said, I didn't have the confidence to promote my workbook in 2019 and 2018. So a lot of it, I have to build women's confidence so that they can just go in the world and say, this is who I am and this is what I do. Um, in the program, we have five coaches. It's not just me. You get me and I'm editing the book. I'm making sure you have the confidence. But you're in my program doing my five steps. But on top of that, um, I have five separate women that do unique things to come and teach my clients as well. So I have a speaker coach, her name is Sierra Shanae, and she teaches people how to actually break the stage right and actually speak and get out there and, and use their voice um, and brand their voice. And she has a beautiful language around that. Her program is amazing. Um, and then I have a social media manager named Tony, um, and she teaches women how to build a brand that they can, you know, like, like, you know, like, don't just go and post on social media just because you're supposed to build a brand that you actually want to have on the Internet. Right. I have a operations manager who is teaching my cohort automations because AI and like apps and there's a lot that you can do these days that you couldn't do five years ago when I first right. started this. 
Um, and a lot of it doesn't have to just be on your shoulders. Some of it really can be automated to reduce the amount of times that you have to be uncomfortable, right? <laughs> and to give you a chance to build your confidence th th so that you're not pitching constantly or putting yourself out there constantly. Some things can really be automated through social media and through your email processes. Wow. That, that's and, you know, I was thinking about writing myself, as I told you in our, yeah. our previous conversation. But I do yeah. know there are steps and it's good that uh, your um, business organization is helping others because you get the cold feet, you pick up the pen, you like, I don't know what to say. And you, you can start writing and then you go Absolutely. there. And I yeah. know you got to do these steps. Like, why yeah. are you writing the book, like you said? And first of all, we need to stop making excuses. Woo. You know? Yeah. So then... Maybe perhaps, hey, schedule some time. Schedule yeah. time to write the book. And you got to create, to me, I think you need to, got, you got to create your own space. Try to yeah. create your own space and just get the, the right tools, the writing. The Come up yeah. with your idea and then, you know, figure out what you want to write about and just start writing. But you do yeah. need that push. You need that yeah. motivation and you need people to who have been there and done that like how how we learn we learn from people that's been there done that and yeah. so you you say you're a ghostwriter can you explain yeah. to me what exactly is a ghostwriter yeah so i and i 100% agree with what you're saying about creating space i teach my clients something about inspiration that will help them to just build that system of of becoming an author but with ghostwriting, it's just my job to take people's ideas and turn it into a book. It's not my job to like come up with your book concept or like fill your book with my ideas. It's 100 percent my client's product. It's just my job to create a co cohesive product off of what they give me. So with my ghostwriting clients, we have this two hour discovery call where I like deep dive into who they are and what they want to do. And, you know, I do it with my um, editing clients, too. But with my ghostwriters, I'm doing it solely for the purpose of me sharing and breaking down what I'm going to write. Whereas with my editing clients, we do this so that they can know how to write. But my ghostwriting clients often tell me that I take their book. And like, you know, what they give me, they're surprised at what I give them back <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> because it's it's their words. Right. It's, it's what they say It's what they've already thought in their head. But it's presented in a way that they may not have ever been able to because of their own writing skills. And that's what I love about being a ghostwriter is that people who may not be the best writers can still explore and experience what it's like to have their thoughts and their and their story out in the world without having to let their their deficits trick them up you know so you know you don't go to um an art gallery and <laughs> and like expect to do what an artist does because everybody has their skill and their talent um but everybody has a story that should be shared right. so what I tell people is my role as a ghostwriter is not to, you know, take ownership of my client's work. It's just my job to take the colors that they give me, take this, the, the picture that they want to have, and then to paint the picture based off of what they give me and what they tell me. Okay, that makes sense. Because some people may say, hey, I can start it off, but I know that, hey, I might get cold help. feet and I might get right. cold feet so yeah. if I give you my information can you put it together for me that makes sense yeah and to be honest so I will say this um for most people who don't write who just writing is not their thing they kind of need the the refresher of the English class yeah right. <laughs> so I do that with my clients. Everyone, uh, even in my workbook, there's a style book. Everyone that gets access uh, to my system gets an English course 
refresher, if you will, because there are certain aspects that most people, certain mistakes that most people make in writing that when you become a professional, you can easily point out, right? So I just, I just, all of my clients, even those who are ghostwriting clients, they go through with this kind of like basic level English up level, you know, like where I just teach them how to become a better writer. And I actually had one of my clients go live with me on Instagram and she was saying how her writing, even in her work, has just benefited from my program because I've taught her how to have a more assertive and direct voice when she is writing. And so now her emails even sound more professional. How she shows up in the world overall is just better because she's in my program. And that's key to me um, is to get people skills so that they can have, they can write books. Um, But also accountability, you know, Preezy, some of us, the reason why we make so many excuses is because we've never been in an environment where excuses are unacceptable. Right. And I don't mean I don't mean like cold. If you're having a hard day, if if your dog died, if something happened, we're not going to expect for you to be productive over your emotional scape. Um, it's a very safe environment. So we care a lot about what's happening in your life, but we don't allow what's happening in your life to take away what value you have to give your life. So I give my clients the opportunity to dust themselves off. If something's wrong, let's talk it through. I do a lot of check-ins with my clients. I do a lot of like, um, you know, emotional guidance as well. But then when we're done with that, it's like, okay, girl, it's been two weeks. Let's we have a writing session that's scheduled and, and, and the writing schedule writing session that's scheduled is not for me to hound you. It's just for me to put you in a space where you can't make excuses because I'm sitting right here with you working and I'm working on my work and you're working on your work. And now because we're in this environment where we're being productive, your excuses don't have as much space. Sound like motivation to me. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the cohort, the cohort just started. But I already know, especially given some of the personalities in the cohort, the cohort is going to encourage each other. That's how community works. You know, you you get in a room with, um, you know, 20 other women and this cohort has seven women, six other women in it. And they're all moving and grooving. It's going to encourage you to move and groove, too. You know, I got to make sure I'm doing what I'm doing so that I don't miss out on what's happening with our cohort. Um, but it is absolutely a lot of follow ups, a lot of what's going on, girl, a lot of calls and emails. If you if you miss a few weeks, um, I just I just do my due diligence to make sure that I'm helping my clients be effective. Um, and, it, and it's because I myself am a chronic <laughs> procrastinator. <laughs> you know, I myself have been there. I've been in seasons where you just had no clarity. And because you had no clarity, you had no capacity to execute. Um, and so I do a lot of the emotional work with my clients that I did with myself so that I could get myself to a place where I could actually be doing what God told me to do. Obedience is not easy. <laughs> Obedience is dang it hard. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, and so I teach people to create systems around obedience so that they can actualize because none of us want to have our potential go in the grave with us. You know, nobody wants to die with their dreams still inside of them. Um, And a lot of us just need, we need the right atmosphere. And I I was in a, a webinar with a woman named Lola tomorrow. And she talks about how she creates atmospheres that release women. And, I believe that we are all called to do that to somebody where we just create the atmosphere for safety and vulnerability that will build someone into whoever it is that God already spoke that they would be from the beginning of time. Wow, that's excellent. Have any of your clients um, finished up their books yet or published it? 
so we, I, you know, my ghostwriting clients, I've, I've been doing editing and ghostwriting for a long time. So I have about eight clients that have published books on Amazon, on the internet. Um, and I've ghostwritten a number of books and I've done dissertation projects. I, I had a, a doctoral candidate who actually got her doctoral degree through the work that I did for her. Um, but this cohort, this collection of women, they are just starting. So um, the SNAP Method Virtual Writing Residency, which is the program that I run quarterly, the, the first cohort just launched. And my client, Angel, her book comes out sometime in mid-September. And my client, Davida, who is also in the program, her book should be releasing at some point in the new year, early in the new year. So we are kind of like at the beginning of the actual program, the SNAP method. And I'll be honest, Freezy, I'm not nervous at all about my client's work and what they will produce. I think I'm, I'm more so just excited to see all of the results um, because I'm already seeing them grow. I'm already seeing them change. I've already seen them actualize some things that they have been praying for. And so in January, which is when a lot of the client's work will be finished, um, I intend to just spend the whole month like <laughs> dancing around in a circle <laughs> um, and just being grateful and praising God because I know that they will have had so many tools and given so much information and they will have transformed in so many ways. Um, and my client, Angel, she's first up for publishing out of this group of women who I've helped. And she went live, like I said, with me. And literally the, the transformation from when we started in March to who she is today. Um, we were on the phone crying about it about a month ago <laughs> because wow. it, it was just, it's just, her story is so amazing. Her book is called The Submitted Soul and it is about her journey to learning to have faith even when it's hard. And just her story, I believe is gonna create such a safe space for women to understand that like faith and, and spirituality doesn't always look nice and peaceful and cute the way that social media tries to make it look sometimes it is hard work that you just have to be committed to because you love god and he loves you um so yeah we we have a lot of really good books coming <laughs> coming up very soon <laughs> now uh the majority of your authors are they um christians so you don't have to write a christian book to be in my program and you don't have to be a Christian, but I'm a firm believer that a lot of the things that you need to build resilience and confidence has to be rooted in your faith. Because if you root it in yourself, if you root it in your activities, if you root it in your accomplishments, then you'll fail. And you'll get to a place where those things are not enough and you'll still be insecure. But what I found is that when I took the load off of my shoulders, for why I'm confident. And I just put it on the fact that God allowed me to be alive, that now I didn't, I, it's like, you can't, you can't bother that. Like, you, <laughs> how can you knock that? The reality is I'm, I'm worthy of love, respect and dignity because God caused me to be in the world. But simply because I have breath in my lungs, I have value. Um, when I decided to do that, when I started to make my faith the basis of my confidence, then my confidence really started to increase. And then I couldn't make excuses, you know, like I couldn't say, oh, I can't go do this thing right. because, you know, because what will they think? And it's like, well, it doesn't matter what they think. What did God tell you to do? Right. So I don't, I don't tell people that they have to be Christian to get in my program, but there are a lot of basic biblical principles that are connected to my program. And I do know that, you know, no matter what religion you believe, there is good wisdom in the Bible. And a lot of social constructs are based on the Bible. And so I try to, I try to be transparent with people. Like, you know, if you don't believe in Jesus, if the Bible is not your, your religious book, you may come into the program and find a lot of value in what I have to say, but you might have to find your own ways to implement your own faith and your own religion into the things that I, that, that we talk about. Right. Right. Okay. Well, 
I don't require them to write a book about God at all. To be honest, we it, a lot of my clients are writing memoirs, they're writing stories about their lives, right. <clears throat> and they're they're creating the basis of like coaching businesses or speaking businesses, small groups. Um, my clients are often creating the basis for a business around whatever transformation God gave them. And so that's why we typically end up getting to talk about God anyway, <laughs> because they're talking about their own life story. Yes. I do have two women who are writing fiction books in my program, and I'm really excited to see um, how they implement the faith piece into their own confidence. But I do know that both of them are deeply, uh, deeply rooted in their faith. And so they're just excited to have another element and another way to express their faith in their work. Wow, that's good. That's good. How long is your program again? It's six months. And I tell people all the time, you cannot rush the process of being an author. You can rush a book. You can. You can make a book in two days. Go use chat, be, chat, chat GPT and it can be done in 15 minutes. Wow. But you won't be an author. You'll just have a book. Right. And I learned that the actual process of becoming an author the time that it takes to learn how to market yourself, the time that it takes to build your confidence, the time that it takes to find your audience, the time that it takes to actually prepare yourself to go out in the world and make money from your book is not it's not a quick and easy process. It's not a microwavable thing because you can microwave um, a lot of the processes. Right. Like you can pop up a website and create a book and get all of that stuff so that you on the outside are ready. But then when somebody actually calls you and asks you to come do a 20 minute speech, what you going to talk about? Exactly. <laughs> what you going to get to say? Or, or when someone asks you to, you know, tell them more about your book, if you haven't actually taken the time to write your book, then what will happen is you'll, you'll come and you'll feel like a fraud. And you'll be a fraud because you would not have actually invested the time to to believe in what you create. And that belief part, the part of where you actually learn to believe in yourself, it is the game changer. Because that's the thing that, you know, you don't even have to worry about your book no more. A lot of people will, I believe in the future that people will come to my program and not just get their book, but they'll learn what is their actual life purpose? What should you be doing with your whole life? Just because they went through this process of, of learning themselves and getting the confidence to walk out whatever it is God told them to do. What about, I have one more question. What about people yeah. who decide to publish their book on their own? Do you think that's a yes. good idea? So, or? All of my clients self-publish presently. Um, my program is fantastic for people who want to self-publish there's also a lot of guidance that i give my clients if they want to take their book and then pitch their book to a traditional publishing house but i tell people just to be realistic a lot of times if you've never written a book and you don't have an audience then trying to go pitch a traditional publisher is just going to be deflating it's going to deflate your ego because you'll get a lot of rejections um, and there are lots of presses out there. There's, there's a lot of publishing houses out there. Um, and so we just, you just have to be like resilient and consistently pushing to find the, the people who will publish your book. But I always tell my clients that if this is your first time writing a book, then you should publish on your own so that you can start to be like really clear on expectations from your publisher when you get one because royalties and managing your your rights for your actual book those things all come into play when you work with a publisher right. and um i like to give my clients the opportunity to really understand how to build a book business so that they can't be taken advantage of in the future when they are ready um and a lot of times when you are not releasing your debut book but you've already shown that you can have a group of people who will read your book, then you're much more attracted to publishing houses. And that is why I teach my clients how to build their book business so that they can take their next book and go get a traditional publisher or do whatever they want to do, right? I just give them the foundation that they need 
to really start their journey as an author. Right, because they really, you really should do your homework when it comes to publishers as well. It's a yeah. lot of scamming, right? Um, so, in the world of like throw up a website and throw up some stuff on KDP, there is a lot of publishers. They are taking ridiculous royalty percentages, and you know, people. I also teach my clients about intellectual property. Your IP is non-negotiable, um, and a lot of publishing houses when you publish with them you no longer own the rights to your book mm. they do and that's okay right if you worked out the the deal so that you get a good enough percentage of the royalties and if they're doing a lot of work for you because that's the thing about a publisher publishers are only beneficial in 2023 if they're going to actually increase your sales exponentially Right. But if you go to a small publishing house and they can't really help you make sales, but now they own 20 percent of your royalties every time a book is purchased or and that's if it's great, you know. But I mean, you think a lot of small publishing houses are now taking like 40 and 50 percent of royalties, but they're not actually doing enough to help authors get their books sold. Right. And that's why I tell my authors, do it yourself first so that you can know how to make money from your book just period you know um because if you take that to a publisher of a, a large house or a small publishing house and you say hey i already know how to get myself a thousand readers i already know how to get book orders i already know how to go and speak based on my book at vendor events and sell 30 40 copies in one day when you can do those type of things then publishers are less willing to be sharks because they know that you know your stuff. They know they know that you know what you're doing. Have you ever done seminars or, you know, went to different so, places to speak about, you know, what you're doing? Or you just, like you said, you're starting off right now, so. I've done a lot of speaking around confidence. I've done, I've hosted events and done confidence activities throughout the events. Um, I hosted a Mother's Day brunch that I did that, and it was really fun. Oh, nice. um, I spoke at church. So, Again, this all kind of started for me as a ministry. Um, so I spoke at a lot of churches around confidence. I was hosting a lot of my own events around confidence, but but I didn't know, you know. <laughs> it's like I could you couldn't have even told me at the in December of 2022 that this is what I would be doing. Um, but I believe, and I actually just watched a sermon about this that clarity causes speed. When you know what you're supposed to be doing, it it causes you to accelerate in what you do. So my speaker coach who's coming to my program, she and I are already in the process of building out what it looks like for me to speak about this process, about writing a book to get confidence. And um, it's really, like you said, it's the beginning. It really, I'm like, we're like just at the tippy tippy top of what I know God has always created me to be. Because like I said, I mean, my grandfather wrote a book when I was a little girl. My dad and my mom, like English and writing and creativity has been around me my whole life. And it just took me, you know, a, a couple of decades, <laughs> a few decades <laughs> to, to get clarity on what it all was in my life for and why it all happened. Um, but I'm I'm really excited. I'm excited about the opportunity to speak with clients and to do speaking engagements and to do seminars and workshops um, and even to pitch corporations for what it looks like to do this um, with their CEOs and leaders in their in their organizations, because um, everybody is more bought into a story than they are a business. And I believe that CEOs who effectively tell their story also endear people to their brands right the thing that um i'm working with a client now to do is to utilize their own story to manage growing a a an organization that they're connected to and so i'm toying with that to see how that looks in the corporate range and in the government range uh, in that area where it's not just on the individual level but on the organizational level through individuals as well so we're just starting crazy we got <laughs> we got a lot to do it's good though it sounds like you got 
everything in 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 order yeah you yeah. got your team yeah and and that is just seriously like like you know life coming together and like you know i i'm a firm believer that when you're doing the right stuff i tell my clients all the time when heaven is is about to break loose all hell will break loose too right so i got to the place that i'm at now but it was it's been on the heels of recovering from a divorce and recovering from losing all my friends and like there there is such a journey that occurred in my life in the last three years that of course I would get to clarity and of course I would be in a place where heaven could situate me and position me because I was willing and many of the people who work with me they're finally in a place where they're willing to go and do whatever it is that has been on their hearts for years. They've known that they should be writing a book. They've known that they have a story to tell. People have been telling them to do this thing for years and now they're just finally willing. And that is why the book is always gonna be such a fantastic tool for them because it's really just a part of them coming to the place where they were always ordained to come. You know. All hell broke loose in their life, and now heaven is breaking loose as well. <laughs> wow, that's good though. That's good. Now, where do you have? Where do you find the time? You know what? I'm a mommy. You working? Yeah, you're a wife. So I, I'm divorced now, and I, I tell people all the time, praise the Lord, the best thing that ever happened. But I am in a long term relationship. <laughs> I have a amazing boyfriend. I have two children, but so here's the thing. I started this journey at the top of the year and I told God like, Lord, I, I don't want to be teaching for the rest of my life. Right. I, I want this thing to be the thing that changes my life. And so it, it absolutely is on the path of doing just that. Um, we have some things that we're situating for this next cohort. We're doing some press We're we're working to increase our marketing. And honestly, I, I believe that this will be my full time job so that I don't have to do other things like teaching. Um, but also you find the time, you know, like the stuff that gives you life, you will move heaven and earth. OK, that is <laughs> to, true. To That's true. And that's really like I was I had two clients even before the school year ended and I was finding the time. OK, <laughs> OK, crazy. Like I and uh, on my lunch break, doing my preps right after school, 830 at night after my kids go to bed. I you I have found the time because I know it's what I'm supposed to be doing. And my dad told me something um, recently. He said that your gift makes room for you right so what happens is you you work your gift right you hustle you do your moonlighting um and then when god allows then your your gift will make room for you and then you don't necessarily have to hustle the same way you still got to work now but it's just a different work and i believe that that's that's where i'm entering um the summer was a fantastic time where i could focus 100 percent on my business and we've grown a lot because of that um, and I believe that there are just going to be some things that occur between now and the top of September that solidify my ability to continue to work on my own for myself and be my own boss. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> that sounds yeah. good. That's good. What advice can you give to someone who is thinking about becoming an author? Um, the first thing that I would tell anyone is the, the thing that you want to write, go read. So I talk a lot about this because my, like specifically millennials, we like to present ourselves as experts when we, <laughs> have, we don't have any expertise. Yeah. Um, and so when I call myself an expert editor, it's not because I have wanted to be an editor or I thought I was an editor or because I edited it for some time. I really have been fixing people's writing, editing people's books for 10 years. And because of that, I've read a million words wow. for sure, probably more than a million. Um, I'm, there's not like 
there's no way to hop and skip and jump over the process. As a person who likes to accelerate her life, (laughs) I have learned process is always the way to actually see growth. So if you want to be an author, the first thing that you need to do is go read books that are like the book you want to write. If you want to write a book about strength, go read books about strength. If you want to write a book about how to crochet, (laughs) go read some books about crocheting because, um, and you're not doing this to copy, right? Because we're also in that generation where it's like everybody just wants to copy and paste. No, we're not doing that for that. This is not about copying and pasting. This is about learning the jargon of your industry. You know, lawyers talk the same way. Um, People in industries have a language. And if you want to become a thought leader or an author, or if you want someone to see you as somebody to listen to, then you have to know the language of your industry. So start by reading. Tell people all the time. Start by reading. And it doesn't have to be deep. Don't go make it hard. I tell tell my clients that all the time, too. Like, like don't give yourself another job because you have one. You know, even if it's just blog posts online or read the captions of the people who you like to follow. Stop scrolling past the captions. Actually read the captions, read the comments. Just start to read more because reading will help you be a better writer. Reading will give you more language. It'll give you more verbs. You'll you'll find yourself having a better ability to talk because your your words will be diverse. So start by reading. Um, And then. The second thing I would tell a person who is ready to be an author or wants to be an author is to go take the time to dive into themselves. What do you want out of life? And don't say it like, oh, I just want to be able to have financial freedom. No, no, no. Like, really. You there? I'm here. I'm sorry. Somebody called me. and. Oh. and, and <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. What were you yeah, saying? What was that last part? I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I tell my clients to go figure out what they want. Right. What do you like? What do you really want? And not don't just say like, I want to be financially free. Really tell me what that means. How much money do you want to make a year? Uh, what will you buy with that money? What will you dress like? What will you sound like? What will your hair be like? Really figure out what you want out of life. Because when you figure out what you really want, like really seriously, then you stop making excuses about what it takes to get it. Ah, uh, that makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> yeah. that when you really know what, like you're like, I know and it's crazy. I talk about this all the time. I tell me, <laughs> I'm obsessed with Hermes, the company, because it is two centuries old. They have been able to build a brand that has lasted for 200 years. So that alone is a magical feat that is just crazy to, to think that I could start something today that 200 years from now will still be existing and not just be existing. Right. But like thriving and people will know about it and people will want it that's amazing but on top of it being this brand that lasted for 200 years it has a a value and culture that has made it almost equivalent to the value you know better than the value of gold which means that it has created and positioned itself and culture to be important and relevant and timeless So I'm obsessed with the brand of Hermes because it just to me, it's like if I could just have something from that brand, then that means I am connected to a timeless, you know, piece of culture. So I when my when I first did this. It was because my ex-husband was trying to see what he could buy me. Right. And he was in a program. (laughs) I just talked about this yesterday to some of my, one of my staff. He was in a program for narcissists to save their marriage. Okay. How to manipulate your wife to stay with you. That's like basically (laughs) the the gist of the program. But um, he said one of the, the partner activities that I had to do, which I only agreed to do one, 
was that I had to tell him everything I wanted in my life. Right. And I told him, he said, okay, I feel everything. I'm like, like what I want today or like what I, he said, no, what you want in your whole life. Right. That list was 75 things long. <laughs> you ain't going to complete that, that to list. year 20, 20, 30. <laughs> Listen, some of the things on that list I may never get, right? Like it may never happen, but just the clarity that I'm the type of woman who has thoughts and desires and right. appetites for those yes. things yes. started to challenge how I was showing up every day. Because the woman who has a cottage in Paris and 30 Air Man's bags, <laughs> well, she, you're not going to get there yelling at your ex, at your husband, screaming right. at your husband every day, right? And so that activity really challenged me to show up in the world completely different. And I'm in a place in my life where I'm about to do the same activity, right? Do this massive dump of everything I ever want to accomplish in life and everything I ever want to do because I know that having that on a sheet of paper is going to challenge who I am. And if you want to be an author, what you're really saying is that you want to share who you are with the world. Right. And you cannot do that without being ready to be challenged because yeah. the world is, listen, the world <laughs> If you come out and tell the world that you're an author, the world is going to they're going to ask you, well, why should I listen to you? Right. And if you haven't really started to figure that out, when people ask you those questions, it will shatter you. It will tear you down. It will make you feel insignificant. But if you have gotten an understanding of who you are and what you really want, when people ask you why they should listen to you, you will already know what to say. Exactly. That makes sense. So those are the two things you got to do. Go read, please. <laughs> yes. And then also get get laser focused on who you are. And and you'll be those two things alone. I'll I'll be honest, Freezy, like that alone is a coaching session. Like that right there <laughs> is a revelation for people because so many of us go out in the world every day and we don't know what we want out of life. Right. We haven't really taken the time to ask ourselves who are we? And we don't really have any real knowledge. We have surface knowledge. We have stuff that we think, but we don't ever challenge what we think by finding out if it's true. We'll we'll think, oh, I'm just I, I'm I'm such a rude person, but we won't go do the work to figure out well why am I rude? We'll say, uh, I'm always tired, but we won't figure out why am I always tired? What's the knowledge behind what I'm saying to myself? Um, and those are the things that hinder us that's the stuff that keeps us from being able to actually uh, execute and become fabulous people right and all of the fabulous people in the world who are doing amazing things like i'm not talking about people who are kind and loving because that's important and, and that is that is love and that is agape and it's needed but i'm talking about people who are able to do ex expansive things with their life it's because they started to really get clear on who they are and what they wanted and how they were going to get what they wanted and self-love yes it's huge if you don't like yourself it doesn't matter how much you do for other people you will not be fulfilled nope you will not be fulfilled say that all the time you gotta love yourself yeah yeah so and that takes compassion i mean we do an activity called hills and valleys in my program where I walk people through the process of looking at the version of themselves, who they were when they were their absolute worst. Like, like we all have that person in our head that we were, the version of ourselves that we don't really like to even talk about. You know, it's like, ooh, that girl really, she was going through it. Um, but many of us have never been compassionate to that person who we were. We were so focused on becoming better and we were so focused on getting out of whatever state we were in that put us in that place that we don't take the time to say, hey, even at my absolute worst, when I was the worst human being I could ever be, I was still deserving of love and care. I, I deserve to go look at myself in that time of my life and not only think negative things, but see how I was able to survive, see how I was able to take care of myself. Um, I have a client who's a um, who's who was in jail, convicted, and 
that time in his life, he just he just does not have the capacity to see all of the amazing things that God had situated in his life for that time. And so what we've done is done a lot of work to go back to that place, not to applaud the behavior that put him in jail, but to applaud the fact that the person that he was then survived. And now he's able to be who he is now. Wow. That self-love is like, that is game changing. Compassion that's to that's yourself. That's, yes, that is everything. That yeah. is everything nourishing Uh yourself is huge you have to and that's why nourish is one of the parts of the program because you have got to learn how to build yourself up you got to learn how to feed yourself and how to use the resources that god gave you to be a source for yourself self-soothing and self-care and crisis care and emotional care all of that stuff (laughs) is how you can show up in the world and be authentic because you really have taken the time to take care of yourself. I was just getting ready to ask you for an inspirational quote, but you just said it. Oh, <laughs> yay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> you just said it. That was awesome. See how it just flow? You don't need nobody even have to ask you to say it because everything just flows so nicely. You automatically said it. So that was Yay. good. I wow. love that. <laughs> yes, indeed. So where can we find you? Is, is there anything else you want to tell us about your, your program before oh, I yeah. ask you where can we find you? Because this has been very, wow, uplifting. This has been awesome. Uh-huh. and. I can't wait to put this out for those that are so interested in writing and and giving them that that hope like, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm tired of putting this off. Don't put it off. Write to tell your story. The only thing I would say is that we are launching the fall cohort September 22nd. That's a Friday. That's when the applications are due by. And that's when we're going to have our first meeting for this fall cohort. You can find out information about my program at the faith edit, F-A-I-T-H-E-D-I-T dot com. Um, you can find me on social media at I am Markeela. And then the program is called the snap method with two P's. <laughs> um, so you can find us on instagram at the snap method with two p's as well okay so that's the only that's um any other way they could get in contact with you just in case besides you your social media email, you can always shoot us an email um our email is info at the faith um i'm on facebook marquila hinton you know I, I i try if you look up the faith edit on google you'll find us we, okay. <laughs> we're we're everywhere that that we should be <laughs> that's great now I repeat your information just one more time for those just in case that might have missed it absolutely our website is the faith edit f-a-i-t-h-e-d-i-t dot com you can find me on instagram at i am markeela that is m-a-r-k-e-y-l-a um, and the business Instagram is for the program, The Snap Method. And Snap is spelled with two Ps. Awesome. Awesome. And give your, you gave your email, right? Yeah. And the email is info at thefaithedit.com. Awesome. I'm going to put it in the bio anyway, but I always like to yes. have it on audio. It's, this has been a great, great, yes. awesome <laughs> interview. I love it. Um. I know. I, I wish you all the success, and you know, you and I are going to be talking soon. Um, Absolutely. For what I want to do, and it has just been an honor. I'm so happy that I met you, and you know, you're always welcome to come back on my show if you have Absolutely. any other information that you would love to put out there for the audience, because people need to know. You know, sometimes a lot of people hate to ask questions or they may think they asking the wrong question or whatever. But how are you supposed to know? You know, no question should be wrong, you know, especially when you're trying to fulfill your dream, you know, and to do better things in life. And, you know, we always got to keep God first. So it's important. (laughs) It's important to know what we need to know to grow. That's how I feel. 
So yes, yes. Well, I'm definitely going to be bothering you. I'm definitely oh, going to. Oh yeah, you better bother me. <laughs> I'm gonna have my authors, um, you know, reach out to you because I think any platform that's willing to allow people to tell their story is, is an important platform. Absolutely. Um, so I, I appreciate you so much for allowing me Absolutely. to come. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Send them my way. I, you know, yes. <laughs> think that when there's positive information, it should be told. Yes. yes. So it's very, very important. But anyway, thank you so much for coming on. I want to tell my audience, as I always say, to live, laugh, love, love you, love you first. Because you can't love anyone or anything unless you love yourself first. And stay healthy, stay focused, keep God first in your life. And hug and squeeze your family members and your pets, because they family too. Just a little bit tighter every day. I love you, Mommy and Daddy, forever. And Miss Marquila, thank you so much for being on Listen Up, Listen In Podcast. And uh, we definitely going to talk soon. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yay! Oh, thank you. social media you'll be able to see all the platforms my podcast is on wherever you consume my podcast hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when a new episode is posted rate review and share this podcast listen up listen in listen up listen in